Okay, we'll get started. Um, I think people will continue to kind of trickle in, but we'll um, go ahead and start with who's in the room now. Um, first, I wanted to welcome everybody and thank you for coming um, to this workshop. Um, we have three really outstanding and passionate and thoughtful farmers to share with their, um, their social media experience with you today. Um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Nikki Presley. I'm the program coordinator for the Farmers of Color Network. Um, also on the call is Sabine Frid Bernards. Um, you probably got an email from her. She is the grants coordinator for the Farmers of Color Network. Um, just to kind of give you a little rundown of the program today, this afternoon, we'll do a few introductions and then um, each speaker will get about 15 to 20 minutes um, to, to do their presentations. And then we're gonna save all the questions towards the end. So if you would remain muted during the presentations and you can just drop your questions in the chat and uh, Sabine or I will um, be compiling all the questions so that we make sure that everything gets um, get, gets asked at the end. Um, so um, just to kind of do a little bit of introduction, well, first I'll give a shout out to the Kellogg's Foundation for funding that made this workshop uh, possible. Um, so if you don't know much about RAFI or Farmers of Color Network, I'll do a little introduction. Um, Farmers of Color Network is actually a program of RAFI USA. Um, RAFI USA is a, a nonprofit that is based um, in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. Um, we provide technical assistance. We do policy and advocacy work um, for farmers um, to make sure they have the tools um, they need for their farms, um, for their communities. Um, and so the Farmers of Color Network um, is a program that started under or within the RAFI um, organization in 2017 with the focus um, and goal to grow and to support farmers of color. And so we do that through farmer-led technical assistance. We do that through funding opportunities. We do that through you know, events and workshops like this. Um, we do that through gatherings um, and networking events. And really what, what our work is really is to, to support farmers of color, support farmers of color's ancestral um, traditions and knowledge and to grow that and to, to sustain that. And also to, um, to help farmers um, enter into new and alternative markets. So currently the program is serving mostly farmers in the Southeast. Um, that has the potential to grow later on, but right now that is where our focus is. Um, also a part of the network who, um, who you, will, you will not see on this call, but um, is Taz Walker, who is the senior program manager and also Lakita Smith, who is the program manager um, for the Farmers of Color Network. Um, so for those of you who just dropped in, um, we're just doing some short introductions and then we're gonna get um, to our speakers. So I'll introduce our speakers now. Uh, first up, we'll have C. Stanley. Um, C is the CEO and farmer um, at Green Heifer Farms in Liberty, North Carolina. Uh, Green Heifer is a farm, it's a tea company, it's a natural food brand, and it's an educational resource. Um, C grew up in an agrarian uh, family in Alabama's, in Alabama's Black Belt, excuse me, and started Green Heifer Farms in 2018. And then after C, um, we'll have uh, Maria Dominique Villanueva, who is the executive director at Fountain Heights Farms and the founder of a BIPOC-centered food cooperative uh, called Hashtag We All Eat. Um, in addition to her food work, she is involved in local mutual aid work and advocates for language access for limited English speakers. Um, she also farms alongside her partner, um, Christopher Gooden in Birmingham, Alabama. And then wrapping us up today will be Kamal Bell, who is the CEO and farmer at Sankofa Farms in Cedar Grove, North Carolina. Uh, Sankofa grows vegetables, raises bees, among many other things. Um, it's also uh, serves as an educational and learning space for young adults. Um, and Sankofa seeks to adjust and assist in changing uh, the food intake habits um, of those who are in or affected um, by food deserts. So without further ado, um, I'll send it over to C and we'll get us started. All righty, welcome everyone. I see a few familiar names in um, the group, so that's always a good thing. Uh, as was shared with you, I am Clarinda C. Stanley. You can go to the next slide. Yeah, you heard a little bit about me. So military, kid, but I consider the Alabama Black Belt where I went to middle and high school home. Have been here in North Carolina since 2007. And as you can see, there's a gap, right? I came in 2007, started Green Heifer Farms in 2018. Farming was not 
in my original plan for life, but that's how life can change. And now I have Green Heifer Farms, which is 15 acres. Um, we grow and create value add products. And my background coming into farming um, is I have 20 years of marketing, communications, and fundraising experience. I am actually still a fundraiser full-time in addition to running um, Green Heifer Farms. So you can go to the next slide. If you follow me at all, y'all already knew, y'all gonna get a picture of the grandkids, okay? It has nothing to do with the presentation. I'm gonna figure out something. Oh, okay, I'll make it fit. Uh, legacy, <laughs> you know, it's all about legacy and that's true. I do look at farming, um, at land stewardship as part of our family's legacy. And so those are three of my grandbabies. Since this picture was taken, I have another one who has been added and I have another one that is uh, in development and will be making his grand entrance in January. So that's a big part of what drives um, our social media because, let me go next slide. One thing that anyone um, who's connected with our brand, who follows us on social media, it can say about us is that uh, it's authentic, right? We know who our target audience is, and that's a very important part of building a social media platform. So your social media platform is this much of your communications program. It's not the be all end all. A lot of people think, okay, if I have a big following or if I have tons of engagement, that that means that I'm communicating, but it's only a fraction of it because there's other pieces such as your email list, your website, et cetera. But throughout all of this, you have to be authentic, right? You have to present your brand as it really is and know who your target audience is because you don't want to be out on social media trying to just throw these disparate arrows out there and hope that you hit your target. When you go into it knowing who your target market is, it makes um, your messaging that much more precise. And go to the next slide. So going into Green Heifer Farms, we are a for-profit S corporation. Um, we knew that we wanted to bring certain values and principles with us. And those are the things that we convey through our social media platform. And we've coined this as the four E's solution. So it's based on economic empowerment, uh, how agricultural businesses, how um, black owned, BIPOC owned farms, those connected to the agricultural space, auxiliary businesses, et cetera, can enter this industrial complex, which is built on tremendous inequities. But how can we enter this in a position of economic power and empowerment? And so then, of course, that leads right, right into equity. We know that agriculture as a whole is based on a system built on inequities. And so within that space, especially when you start talking about generational land and the acquisition of an asset, then you're going to enter the equity conversation. Um, I am very much about the environment. We are in the process of pursuing our USDA organic certification. Is it necessary? No. Is it part of our brand? Yeah, it fits with our overall strategy. Um, we're working on B Corp, Corp, um, B Corp verification, we recycle, we're, you know, we use organic um, materials, etc. We cover crop, we do the things to take care of the planet, right? Because um, regardless of what your political ideology is, religion, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, it's getting hot, y'all, okay? And it's getting hotter, and I'm getting older, and I ain't got time for it. I just really, I don't have time for this extra heat. So, uh, we're very much about the environment. And then, of course, education. We seek to provide um, others with lessons learned with, uh, you know, we're because we're authentic. We talk about our mistakes. We talk about this is what we know now that we didn't know then. But to try to provide the greater community with education. And we use social media as a mechanism to do that. 
You can go to the next slide, please. Now, a key thing that we had to learn with social media, as in with every other aspect of our marketing um, approach, of our overall communications approach, was that we have to have a target customer profile. Like we have a customer in mind when we're talking, when we're communicating through social media platforms, through our newsletters, et cetera. We tailor it. You know, we don't necessarily always talk to the IG folks the same way we talk to the Facebook folks. And that's definitely not the way we talk, you know, when we get out of social media and we're having a conversation with our email list. But there is definitely some consistency and some cohesiveness. And we have a target customer profile in mind. So when you're thinking about social media, make sure that you are talking to your people, okay? Current and future. Um, and it is very important, you can go to the next slide, that you set the tone, right? A lot of people get on social media and you have your business brand and when I'm talking to within um, the entrepreneurial space or the agricultural space, I'm very consistent with the fact that, you know, a farm is an entrepreneurial endeavor. And if you're starting a farm in particular, that is a startup company. And so going into even social media, we want it to set the tone. There are certain things that you just have to be aware of. If you go into it and you're like, woe be unto me, <laughs> you know, you're Eeyore um, off of Winnie the Pooh. That's going to set the tone for your business. And then when you want to come with a nicely priced value add product, it may be difficult for your audience to shift in thinking. And so that's why it's really, really important that you bring your audience on your journey. A lot of us get caught up and we think we're supposed to start out with all of this fancy stuff and we're supposed to be pretty and everything is supposed to be shiny and new and that's not the case. When you can bring your audience on your journey and social media is the perfect platform to do that, then they are vested in your success. You can go to the next slide. I'm gonna give y'all an example of bringing the audience in on y'all journey, on, on your journey. So some of you who have been following us on social media, y'all know that little sad little building, that little impulsive buy. I went and fell in love with the little building, just as raggedy as it wanted to be. Needed a new foundation in this picture, it needed new windows, it didn't have any plumbing, it didn't have any um, electricity, there were bugs in it, wasps that were bullying me. I mean, all kinds of situations, right? But I brought the audience in on our journey and we use social media to do that. Y'all went along with me when I purchased this building. You saw me bring it on the truck. You saw how raggedy it was, right? And because we were able to bring it along authentically in our voice and because we set the tone for it. So you saw us out there working. You saw us applying for grants and putting a product out, all kinds of things. And so because we use social media as a mechanism to bring you along, making sure everything fits within our four E's and our brand values and, and our, um, our brand voice, you can go to the next slide. You were able to see this, right? So to someone who's new to our, our social media following, they may look at that and be like, oh, you know, that's a little cabin, it's cute, <laughs> she cute. They don't know about the mural on the side or figuring out how to do the plumbing or the fact that we finally have a flushing toilet because they're not vested in that. And that's the key thing you have with social media. You are able to bring people in so that they are able to learn you in an authentic way. And it's not about, you know, who has the biggest following. It's not about uh, who's the most popular because, y'all, there's a lot of popular folks who are not making profit, um, making profits out there. And it's a whole bunch of folks who may be following you to be nosy. There's a lot of nosy people in the world, okay? But are they your customer? <laughs> are they actually investing in you? That There's a difference. Go to the next slide. And you do want to spend time with social media, not just throw spaghetti up against the wall to see what sticks. You want to invest in the strategy, right? You're starting out, you don't have a lot of resources. So your strategy may be you spending time on Google and on YouTube, because there is a lot of free resources out there, or tapping into organizations such as Rafi and really coming up with a plan. 
right? You, you, if, if you're developing a social media following and you're on six different platforms and you're not doing any of them well, you need to develop a strategy so that you can fine tune that. You need to invest in your visuals. The best that you can get where you are right now. And I'll show an example later. Um, but you need to invest in your visuals. If you don't have graphic design skills, if you don't have, um, the, you know, photography skills, et cetera. First of all, let me tell you, these right here, this is how you can get started on your social media, period. And these little cameras, you know, maybe you need to go and upgrade your phone. If it flip up, no, we're we, we not going to do that. But go ahead, upgrade your phone, consider it a business investment and start taking pictures and um, invest in your visuals in a way that maybe you get a graduate student to do your logo and your visual presence and put some thought into it. But you want to have some kind of visual presence that's established. And then on social media, invest in your knowledge. Again, uh, look at free resources, go on YouTube. There's tons of things that help you build your social media know-how that teach you how to go in and look at your insights and look at your um, the data that different platforms provide you. They'll tell you what time your audience is online. They'll tell you who makes up your audience, whether it's mostly men or mostly women. So definitely you want to invest in that knowledge. Now, in this next slide, I'm going to show you um, one of our very early visuals, uh, Fixity, which remains one of our most popular blends. Uh, the red on burgundy, I don't know why anybody let me do that. It's hard to read. Uh, <laughs> this was not necessarily, um, you know, it's different from where we are now, but at the time, it was the best that we could do. And so we didn't delay and not move forward because it wasn't shiny enough or it wasn't perfect. You go ahead and put the best that you can out there. Um, thank you whoever said I got beautiful grandkids. I appreciate that. Uh, put the best that you have out there and when you can do better, then that's when you do better. Now, some of you may be like, well, I don't have a value add product. It doesn't matter what line of um, selling you're in, whether you're at the flea market or whether you're at um, a farmer's market, whether <clears throat> you have a, a stand and people come to your farm, regardless of what it is, social media is all about visuals, right? People like videos. They want to see your face. Um, they want to connect with you authentically. And it is all about aesthetics. And so that's something that you do want to keep top and center of mind. You can go to the next one. And so as we evolved with our brand, as we evolved with our social media platform, this is now our branding. Because when you go out there and you develop a brand and you use social media to help expand that brand, then you should see some changes on your bottom line. And when that bottom line shifts, then that's when you, of course, invest in scaling up, which is what we did here. So these are our, this is our current packaging, our visuals, our social media we use a lot of these colors. We're consistent. You know, I still pop in and, uh, and post videos and stuff like that. But we do try to have some um, consistency with aesthetics. Go to the next slide. And then this is going to be the next version. So now we're expanding what we're doing. And so I'm going to share that with our audience. I haven't shared it with them yet. I'm telling y'all first. So, you know. Uh, you, you can go ahead and tell folks. It's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> as a matter of fact, tell as many people as you know. So we will be splitting our products to have um, versions of our products with hemp, versions of our products with um, out hemp, which will be known, would just be teas, very co cohesive. I get to share all of that, you know, on social media and use these colors. And so it's very important, um, again, to really take some time to try to make your social media platforms as engaging as possible. Now, most people want videos. They don't want um, static photos anymore. So that's that to consider, but you want this to be consistent with your website, which is gonna be consistent with your newsletter, which is a whole nother workshop. So let me get back to these slides. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start closing this out, but next slide. You know, when it comes to social media, do the absolute best that you can. If you're not active on social media, just pick one or two. 
pick one or two, develop your strategy, develop your schedule, make sure you have your messaging, make sure you're authentic, make sure you bring your audience along on your journey, and then do the best that you can. There are times that you're going to lose followers. There are going to be times that somebody may post something about you or you get some type of media recognition that creates a sudden boost. There are going to be times that um, it's just a lull and you're, or you're too busy and you can't post or can't be consistent. So definitely give yourself grace. Um, give people on social media grace. There are some people out there that are spiritually raggedy. And so also please understand that the more popular, the more um, broad, the more you broaden your social media, especially as you, you if you use it as a platform um, to really communicate with future and current customers, that you really can't really take this stuff like to heart. <laughs> you really can't take social media to heart. It's a tool and use it, um, use it to advance your business and your brand. And then scale when you're able to, right? If you got to start out getting, um, you know, logos and websites and all that kind of stuff that's going to help support your overall, your overall communication strategy. If you have to go and get it from you know, one of the companies that provide you with the template or you, you work with, you know, your nephew who's in school for a degree in graphic design or whatever, then that's what you do. And then as you continue to grow your business, as you continue to grow your farm's profit margins, then you continue to scale up. Now on social media, when we first started out, I was doing it 100%. I was doing like most of the designs, on Canva, if you're not familiar with Canva, it's a great platform for people who are um, handling a lot of their own design responsibilities. They have a lot of things, templates. It's, it's a really good resource. But I was doing a lot. I was doing it. You know, I raised three kids who I taught them to be independent in thought. I told, you know, taught them how not to care what other think other people think about you. But the flip side of that, none of them are on social media. <laughs> they don't care if y'all like their stuff, you know, they're not trying to take selfies. So that came back and I, I ended up doing all the social media and um, it was, you know, it was the best I could do. And I gave myself a lot of grace. But as soon as I was able to bring on people to help with that, I did that. And so now about 70% of the social media falls on me and I have help with design. So just scale when you're able to um, and... Yeah, if you want to get in touch with me, next slide. I don't know where I am on time. Um, I hope I'm okay. I didn't go over, did I? Somebody want to give me a nod? No, you're good. good. You're good. Okay, okay. So anyway, um, if you want to connect with me, here you go. I'm on IG, uh, Green Heifer Farm or Pharmacy. And Facebook, same, uh, was Pharmacy G. HF and I do have a YouTube channel as well where I do talk a lot more about branding and fundraising and stuff like that as it relates to farms and you can you know catch up on my cabin if you haven't been connected because that's been a journey so anyway thanks I enjoyed connecting with you all hope um hope I gave some good information your teas are wonderful thank you thank thanks. you all right. All right, we'll move on to um, Dominique. Oh, I'm just trying to absorb everything. I'm like taking notes from, <laughs> from C and like, yes, about uh, scaling up when you're able to. Um, that just really resonates with me. Um, and I'll talk more about our, our kind of journey for, through social media. Uh, Fountain Heights Farms uh, is part of the very historic neighborhood of Fountain Heights in downtown Birmingham, Alabama. And we are part of a food justice revolution and a land justice revolution here in the city. Uh, we focus on providing food for our neighbors. We uh, offer flexible self-guided employment and we wanna make sure that we're reflective of the people who live and work in our neighborhood. Uh, next slide for me. 
um, you know, one of the we use we use social media a, a little bit differently. We don't um, focus as much on the sales. Uh, we focus more on building community, and so we do it in really three in three different ways. We document our story, um, which is super important, not only for us, but for all black and brown people to be able to tell our own stories. Um, we make sure that we're connecting with our people, so folks in our neighborhood and, and kind of branching out from there. And, um, you know, we also use social media to garner support for the farm and to support other farmers. Next slide for me. One um, you know, way that I, I mentioned is about being able to tell our own stories. And I think C um, mentioned about video and I had to get over a huge um, block because I am not a social media you know, creature. I, I also love to post a lot of things about my kids, um, but I really had to you know, kind of make that leap and decide how, you know, what's, what, what the story that we wanted to tell and then how we were gonna tell it. And so will you um, just play like maybe the first few seconds And so this is a um, just a very quick video of us harvesting some radishes and I'm, you know, kind of chatting in the background, talking and kind of giving an update about the farm and um, about what we're growing and then what we're going to be growing in the future. Thank you. Next slide. Um, and, and so that's a, you know, a way that we share our experience on the farm. Also, you know, get people talking about and being really interested about the things that we're growing and the things that are going on. I think as a um, community supported farm, uh, it's really, really important for us to have that constant exchange and, um, and real um, um, connection with folks, just to make sure that you know they they know you know wh where is this energy, where are these funds, you know where where is all of these being put towards, and what are we harvesting out of it? Um, you know, another really important thing that we do on social media is we claim our values. Um, and you'll see this post a couple of times on our on our um, on our social media, and it is a way that we kind of reaffirm who we are and who we and who we support and who we stand with. Um, especially as you see mentioned, there's a, a whole host of different people. And um, we hope that the people who support us and support our values are really self-selecting. And the folks who are not supportive of that um, are also, you know, opt out on their own. Um, and so that's just one way. And then, you know, we are a farm uh, we started in 2017, but we just started our social media in 2019. And um, so we're, we're sharing the expertise that we have in the areas that we have that are important to us. So in this picture, um, my husband is is uh, talking with the guys about uh, rainwater retention, and he's and he's building this rainwater retention system for actually not our farm, but um, a sister farm just uh, across the bridge from us. Next slide for me. And we also, um, you know, as part of being really authentic, and you know, C mentioned this. Uh, a couple times is, you know, we, we really embrace vulnerability. Um, so along with the authenticity of like seeing, you know, me out there, you know, child uh, uh, herding and, you know, farming at the same time, uh, we're also really transparent about the things that we do. So in this picture, 
uh, we're showing this is the first time that we've had to spray um, an organic um, pesticide on our farm. And I wanted to be really clear about what we were spraying, how we were spraying, you know, how many times and, and what produce, um, because we hadn't done that before. And, you know, it was, it was important, even if it wasn't a huge deal to anybody, which it really, it, it turned out, you know, it, it wasn't a huge deal. Um, you know, but that kind of honesty and, you know, um, acting in a way with open hands, right, all of the time, just lends to the kind of relationships that we want to build with our community. And then, you know, part of, you know, being a farmer is also having, you know, life happen, pests, you know, disease, all of that kind of stuff that can affect our crops and, and delay our, our, um, our harvest. So, you know, here's another kind of picture where we're, you know, we're being really honest and saying like, hey, you know, we're sick, we're down, everybody's down. And, um, you know, we're, we're doing our best and we appreciate it. Um, and again, it's another way that we just say, you know, we're humans, this is, yes, this is a business, yes, this is a community venture, but, um, you know, we also appreciate that people value us as more than just what we produce. Next slide for me. Um, one way that we use, another way that we use it is to connect with people. So, uh, you know, C mentioned about providing, you know, those really beautiful um, coordinated images. And um, I agree, you know, I love, not necessarily always like clicking with everybody's individual posts, but kind of seeing that um, fluidity that comes from, you know, like an Instagram that's really well curated. Uh, we also do a lot of farm tips. So um, making sure that we add some value that way. And, you know, we really know our people. And so even though our target is not necessarily a customer, um, our target are, 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 you know, our black and brown farmers and, you know, people in the neighborhood um, as supporters and, you know, sharing, sharing again, things that, things that don't really work out so well and that we've learned a lot from um, is, is another way that we really connect with folks. Next slide, please. And then the last way, yeah, can you play that one? Woohoo! <laughs> um, that is just like a like a little tiny clip of you know the excitement when we finally got together the funds to um, put up the greenhouse and really sharing in the excitement and just like the grassroots um fundraising that we were able to do and so we we share those kind of things we share um updates to our free stand that we that we keep out um on the on the edges of the farm um we also share a lot of opportunities for other farmers because um I, i've been so uh fortunate to have so many people share opportunities with me um and really showing, you know, solidarity with other farmers. You know, we we have a beautiful network of black and brown farmers, and we're able to show up for them and use and leverage um, our followers and the folks that support us um, to their benefit as well. So, you know, last. Uh, almost two years ago, uh, when we had an elder farmer who had gone through a storm and their um, greenhouse was damaged, uh, we were able to really mobilize very quickly and say like, hey, this farmer needs support. How are we going to get it? How are we going to show up? Let's, you know, let's donate some funds. Let's get the work crews out there um, and, and show up, you know, and really, and really be in solidarity with other farmers. Next slide for me. Yay! 
<laughs> um, and yeah, and so here's an example of also how people show up for us. Um, our, our, our farm is located in an area um, suffering from uh, in inequities in, in the food system. And one of the, the ways that we, that we do, you know, just food distribution is through a um, free stand and it goes very quickly. And so we have partnered with other farms um, to have their produce dropped off as well. And so this is that one of those cases, this is a small, um farmers market unity market birmingham and at the end of the market uh they go around to their farmers and their producers and say hey where where are you putting your vegetables are you taking this home you're taking it to another market if not um you know would you consider this and they've literally you know showed up for for more than a year um it used to be every saturday and now it's every thursday evening uh, providing kind of that extra umph for for this free stand, and um, so that's kind of another way that we're building kind of that mutual aid support. Next slide for me. Um, you know, one of the the questions or or kind of the topics is always around um, social media burnout and. Uh, I'm definitely one of those people that um, can feel that kind of point where I'm like, oh, it's too much. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, in the very beginning, I had made this whole strategy um, and had been very, um, uh, um, you know, I just put a lot on my plate and this, you know, had a whole calendar written out and what I was going to post, you know, Monday through Friday and then, you know, twice on Saturday and all that. No, I didn't do any of that. Um, so I have scaled way back to what I um, am able to do. And that is a, at least a once a week uh, video as an update to the farm, I do it on Mondays uh, when we have our BIPOC um, volunteer day. It just makes sense, um, you know, and it's kind of a trigger for me like, oh yeah, I need to be doing this. Um, and then, so that'll be our, our video. And then we may um, do some still images of the farm throughout the rest of the week. But I wanted to really highlight, and this is from, you know, the NAP ministry, and they're really highlighting that kind of the same essence as, you know, what C was mentioning about, you know, knowing, knowing your audience, knowing, um, you know, how much you're, you're able to do what your strategy is. And then, you know, that's your best, that's your best. And it, and it's, you know, it's beautiful and it, and it works. And when you're ready and you have more capacity, then you do more. Um, but I'm not at a place in my um, journey where I want to be, um, you know, an influencer or, um, you know, any, any of that stuff. So that really feels authentic for me. It feels life affirming for me. Um, and it, it really, it makes it so that it's not a chore, but, but like a great conversation, right. With a friend, um, I'm excited to, to post and to share these things. So next slide for me. And then I'm so glad C mentioned Canva. That is our number one 
um, you know, way that we make uh, posts, especially anything with text, it just turns out really beautifully. Um, you know, the colors are right. You can set up, you know, if you have a logo and you've got, you know, your, your brand colors, you can, um, you know, have that kind of automatically integrated. Um, repost is another one that I use a lot. Um, and it's so that I can share other people's posts really easily from, from Instagram. And, uh, you know, when I post on Instagram, it, I, I used to post under a personal account. Um, and in 2019, we switched to a business account, um, which felt like a, a good time and and some space to you know place between like who I am you know and and all of the you know the kids and how you know amazing my kids are um and then you know the the business farm you know package um and so you know thinking about how you post um to your business versus how you post to your personal page. But our business page is connected with our Facebook business page. So when we post on Instagram, it automatically gets posted to Facebook. Um, and like C mentioned, I, th I think people interact with Facebook a little bit differently. And so we have um, like special groups for our CSA folks and, and, um, you know, uh, a group for, you know, black farmers in the area, but generally it helps me, you know, that, that automation helps me just kind of do one less thing for our general page and kind of keeps it updated. And then the last one, um, was Viva video. And it's just like, you know, you, you can download an app on your phone. It's got some cute little, you know, graphics. That's how we did the, you know, the, the fireworks. Um, but just, you know, it's very intuitive. It's free. <laughs> um, and it just kind of, you know, boosts up um, some of your video posts um, and lets you, kind of manage that on your on your phone. I think that was it for me. I hope it was helpful. Um, I am I'm eager to uh, follow all of you on Instagram and you can find us there at uh, fake Fountain Heights Farms. Thank you. Thank you, Dominique. That was great. Come on. Can everyone hear me clearly? Yeah. Give me a thumbs up. All right, just make yeah. it, I, I, I'm on my headset. So um, we're going to talk about, not literally, like the presentation that I'm getting ready to show you. We'll go through examples of how to use the content and then also how we tell our story at St. Coca. So if you just like see the first slide. And I typically pattern my presentations off of how my social media looks because it's just, it's just another form of consistency. The way I look at social media is it is a cosign to your work. So a lot of times what people will do is they'll go through all of your um, platforms. So um, let me give you an example of uh, Tractor Supply. They'll look at us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. And what companies will also do is they'll look at your um, personal page if they can find it. So I'm just really mindful and I'm um, very intentional about how, what I post, how I post it, and where I post it. So a picture like this, this is a picture that we could use on um, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, Twitter. We can use this on all the platforms because when you're looking at it, you're seeing a Black woman beekeeping and it tells a story. Um, you want to be also very mindful, and Pharmacy touched on it as well, um, upgrade your phone. This was taken with the iPhone 7, and it came out pretty well, but I've since upgraded to um, just using different technology. I have an iPhone 12 now, and it is an investment, 
But um, we also have drone images that you'll see in here. You'll be able to tell the difference in the clarity of the imagery. You can go to the next slide. Um, I think you skipped one right before, right before that one. I uh, know, go back. Oh wait, I guess, well, I guess not enough. You go to the next one. So one thing that I'm very um, intentional about telling people is my educational background. And I will tell that through all phases of my, um, of my life. So I'll talk about my um, elementary school background, how it got me to the point I am now. I'll talk about especially how I went to A&T, especially since a and is, who? Give me one, somebody's at my door. My apologies, every time I get in a presentation, I always say that you're gonna hear my kids or my dog or a combination of all three um, while I'm doing a presentation. But especially since a and is doing well, I do, like on the LinkedIn, this is a really good, um, uh, this is really good detail to have in your profile because just say that you went to kind of A&T, ask people looking at the university and this is doing so well, that will travel and filter people to your profile as well, which could potentially lead you to more opportunities. I right, go to the next, next slide. Um, I also will talk about on my social media platform, which is a theme that I'll have, why do I farm? I want people to see that farming is my passion and it's something that I'm closely related to and then I do day to day. So once people pick up on it, like this person really cares about their, um, about their, their farm and why they do it, it makes grabbing content a whole lot easier too because I don't have to grab the most in-depth content. And there's some days I just won't grab it. I'll just be like, let me get something real quick. But if you can stay consistent with that idea that it's your passion, people can see that, that will attract people to your profile and to want to look at more of what you're doing. Let me go to the next slide. Um, I'll also go through these themes too, more specifically. So I'll have maybe a theme for what I'm doing at the time, and um, it'll be strategic on what my theme is. And then because I'll just talk about farming being my passion. And then I'll show, these will be my sub themes. I'll show farming bringing people together. That'd be me in the classroom. Farming teaches you life skills. That'd be me talking about our students. And farming being um, service-based. I'll do something where I'm working with maybe urban ministries so people get a full scope of why we're doing what we're doing, how it ties into what the idea of Sankofa is. Uh, next slide. So here is a drone shot. So uh, I wouldn't, I would, I would personally suggest if you could, if the operation can afford it, you can summit the cause, you can get a grant for it to get a drone. We have a, um, a Mavic Mini and this gives people a different um, viewpoint of what the farm looks like. So this is like, this picture was taken over my neighbor's house and it was taken not, not even over the farm, but it captures the farm and it shows development over time. So the next time we'll be aware that we took the drone footage from this angle, and then we'll take it once all the tunnels are complete and things are move around, moved around on the farm so people see progression. And this is my son, Akeem. Say, hey, Akeem. He, he likes to be seen by people. He has his little own little Instagram too that we're working on. Are you going to say next slide? Um, so out of the mission of the farm, we started an agricultural academy. And I think this is a piece um, that companies like, and then people who are intrigued and looking for something unique about a farm. So if you go to most farms, you're seeing like literally, I think I've seen a horn, a horn worm, like the green worm with the eggs on his back, like a thousand times over the last two years. And it's because like farmers typically post the same content that, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Well, because people like farmers typically will post the same type of things like, how bonding for the harvest is, um, what a hornworm is. And you're li it's literally like clockwork around the, um, the year. But what happens to farmers in the wintertime is you can't post. So you want to do something dynamic that people can follow your account on. This is one of the things that we didn't do this because of social media. We did it because we literally like, we, everything that you see us doing, we were doing it before, like social media got pretty big. That's always how my qualm was like, now people want to see it. but before we were doing it, um, 
before social media got big, this is what we were doing the entire time. So it's kind of like uh, weird to me that people are now like really seeing it. I don't know. Um, but we, what we will do with the students is we kind of look at the, the approach with them as the education. So as we're educating the student and I'm learning too, and they're presenting new things to me, we're also educating people who are following our page. Uh, next, next, next slide. Hold on. Um, and this is a picture of one of our students, Kamani. So we'll show them through their process. You can literally go through our page and see Kamani from his like first time at the farm all the way. I want to. I want to meet. He can't make noise. You'll see him all the way from when he was in seventh grade all the way until now. And he even has his own Instagram account, uh, Kamani King, where now he's in college and he's pursuing an agricultural degree. So as we're looking at developing our page, we're making sure that these young men, if they're interested, they're developing their own brands as well. And Sankofa just being the platform for them. Uh, next slide. Um, here's a picture what we'll do is when we go on um, uh, speaking engagements, anything that we do outside the normal function of the farm, we'll look for uh, getting content from other photographers. Let's hand out. And what we'll do with these pictures is anytime we go somewhere, we'll say, hey, this isn't the best picture because one of the students is like blinking in it, it mid photo, but we'll say, hey, can we have access to the content? So then we're not in charge of using our phones and try to get um, trying to get posts while we're there. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to amplify the experience. We may post on our story, but then we'll get hundreds of pictures that we can post. So then, when I'm at the farm, we're doing something else. We'll post these pictures when we're when we're engaged, uh, just to engage our followers. You can see after I go. Um, we'll also look at showing pictures of our production just throughout. Um, just throughout the year. So this is a picture from last year. And what we'll do is you can utilize this content. We'll utilize this content where I know if I take a picture like this, I know that I'm going to use this a year later. So I'm going to show, uh, this is audio post. I'm going to take a picture around next um, January, literally have this picture and say, We've come pretty far in our growing practices because this is what our farm looked like last year and this is what it looks like now. So people will follow that aspect. And then they'll also stamp your work as well. Uh, next. What we'll also do is show, uh, this picture will go into a reel. So we'll make sure, and this is really important, how you capture content, how you capture content is gonna be a lot, it's gonna dictate a lot of where it goes. You want to use, I don't know if you all probably can still see me, but you want to use your phone for anything under like a quick picture. So you can get, um, you can just capture what's going on using a portrait mode and that's holding it uh, vertical. If I want to take a video that's going to be longer than a minute on Instagram, it needs to be horizontal. But if I'm going to make a reel, your phone needs to be in portrait mode to record at all of your short segments because it looks really weird when you're taking pictures that are um, portrait mode compared to landscape mode, which is the horizontal, that looks really weird, weird in reels. And, and the reels on Instagram have a hard time processing those pictures. So you wanna make sure you get pictures that capture a process. So you know, just look at this picture. There's a student here, he has a torch to his left, and he's using some kind of guide to burn holes in the landscape fabric. And this will also prevent you from having to write a long caption. I know for me, if I see a caption on Instagram that's longer than maybe uh, five or six sentences, I'm not reading it at all. I know that I'm not reading it. And the people who I talk to around my age, they don't read it at all. So if you want to have a caption that's formatted like that, you might want to put that on LinkedIn. Or you might want to put, yeah, LinkedIn is perfect. LinkedIn is like five years ago, I bought a farm. And I didn't know what I was doing. But now I'm doing such, 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 you get to that long story on LinkedIn. Uh, next, next slide. You also want to get and make sure anything that, in, that anytime that you don't have a second shooter, um, you just ask somebody from the crowd to get a picture. 
So whenever I'm speaking somewhere, the students are speaking somewhere, I took this picture, but I will ask somebody in the crowd to get content for me because you're not going to be thinking about content when you are speaking. You're literally going to be thinking about the speaking, what you got there to speak about, and then you're going to be like, dang, I didn't get anybody to shoot it. My typical practice would be I'll ask somebody, like, hey, the per whoever I talk to, the point of contact, can you grab a quick picture? And I actually guide them on how to get a good picture. A lot of times, I still see to this day, people will have pictures where their head is cut off at the top or the bottom is cut off. You want to get the whole frame. Sometimes you may get somebody like right here that's cut out, but that's all right. You know what's going on. You know there's somebody speaking in, 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 this, um, in this photo. And it's a young, like you get the story in this photo here. Let me go to the next slide. So what we also want to do is, as you're branding your page, you're also planning when you're going to offer a service. So for us, what we did, we did a lot of beekeeping content. So there's a guy named Gary V that talks about like approaching social media. He goes like, um, jab, 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 knockout. So the jab, jab would be like, oh, we have my wife holding the bees. Oh, me catching the swarm. And then you establish yourself in a sense as an authority with the, um, with the service. And then you offer a service for people to buy into. So we did a lot of beekeeping content. We used the GoPro, which is a camera you can on your head and gives you first person view. So we did jab, jab, jab. And the knockout was, all right, now we're doing bees in the trap. Pay us to come learn about bees. Um, next slide. So as we're doing this experience, we'll, we'll pull content. And you can obviously see a different difference in quality from this photo to the very first photo. This was taken with my iPhone um, 12. And what you'll do is not only will the people who are coming to your experience grab content that they can share with you, which is good, but you grab content of them and then you put it out as well. And then they share it as well. And it brings more traffic to your page. Uh, next. You also, anytime you have a large group of people, you definitely want to get that as well because only thing you're doing with social media is establishing yourself and establishing your brand. So the more people in the picture that you can get, the more that you're setting yourself up to um, drive more traffic and drive more money into your business. Uh, next slide. Um, we also have a YouTube channel, which YouTube is another... Um, it's like a month, it's like a whole nother month that I'll, I'll put because YouTube drives itself on posting videos very frequently, maybe every week, maybe, maybe some people every day. Uh, but you have to have frequent videos on YouTube. So we start out with doing YouTube um, early on and we started to get into the mode of shooting content, but then our media and marketing person. Um, our media and marketing person had had to come out like from Charlotte to shoot videos and like, all right, it's not the most sustainable thing. Then you oftentimes have to have script for it. And then based on when you're shooting, you also have to have good lighting. So you want to stay away from YouTube if you don't have a consistent approach to shooting. And a lot of times it has to go with the, like a, a nice camera if you if you want a lot of traffic consistently coming to your profile. So YouTube is something that we'll revisit when we have more time to invest in. Our next slide. Um, also, which is really important, which I forget to do sometimes, you wanna show people what you grow on your farm. So we go, we, we walk the line between family, we walk the line between family, um, youth education, um, growing practices, bees, entrepreneurship, like those are some of our themes. But the one that I've, I often miss it's like what we like what we grow. So because I know that I won't people don't want to stare at food all the time, I'll post food on our um, on our story. But I'll post more of the human aspect and the idea of like learning on the on the main page of St. Culpa. So when we talk about posting, we wanna we I, I mean posting as in I'm talking about Instagram, something in your story every single day. You don't have to have something on your main page. We actually don't post that much on the main page, but if we look through our calendar of what we um, post on our stories, we've had something every single day this year on our story, whether we post one time a day or we post uh, multiple times on the story. 
but we may post on the on the main page maybe once a week. I was just looking at it. I think we only have, I think, 200, 259 posts on our main page, and we've had this page since 2016. So it's not more so of how well your post on your main page is putting, is keeping engagement coming through your page, and that's going to come a lot through your story. And you want to get those clips in portrait mode, not in landscape. Uh, next next uh, slide. So this was a perfect example of how we'll space up the content. We did this in the winter and I'll take porch, uh, pictures like this in portrait mode because it centers the lettuce in the front and makes it look more dramatic in the back. So it, like you can see in the pages like, oh, it's such pretty lettuce. Literally this picture can stop, it didn't, after this last piece of lettuce that you see right here, but this lettuce all the way down to the front. But from a fulfillment purpose, and marketing, you'll take something like this up close. And then maybe the next day, you'll take another part of your, um, of your farm just to give yourself time to space out the content. And I'm literally, you're gonna see these posts next year when I'm talking about last year we were growing lettuce and look like this. This year it looks like this. We changed our growing practices, A, B, and C is an educational and it's in your spacing and giving yourself more time to play with your content. Uh, next, next slide. Um, this is a, I, like I mentioned, like the sub thing, Farmer Service Day. This is a drop off that we did with Fight for 15. And literally, it's just us grabbing, um, grabbing content of one of our underlying things. Uh, next, next slide. Um, also, what we like to do is talk about, like, like to, this is going back to focus on the youth. We focus on the youth very heavily just to show progression and um, uh, evolution with them. So you'll see them in farming gear, then you'll see them also in suits. It gives you a range. And because most of the time you're looking at farmers, you see farmers in farming gear. But if you want to add diversity and you want to add alternatives to your profile, whatever, like say you're going to a wedding, say you're doing something when you're doing, you're dressed up nice outside of the farm, grab that content and use it because that can take you, that can put you in a different um a crowd when people are looking at your page for uh, future opportunities. Uh, next, next page. Um, action shots are really good too. So instead of you posing, um, just like with me holding kale, getting pictures of you actually doing the work is really important when you're, when you're grabbing uh, content for your pages. And you'll know as you put the information out, so like you can go to our Facebook page and Instagram and LinkedIn to see similar content, but our LinkedIn caters to a different demographic, caters to professionals. Um, Facebook for us caters to people who are older who support Ken Kofa, and then Instagram caters to millennials. It caters to a wider range of people, so we have a little bit more wiggle room with that platform. You go to the next, the next slide. Um, this is another picture just of a, a better qualified photographer grabbing a shot and then us using that content later on. So it gives us more uh, content to post over a span of time that's not contingent on us doing it. Uh, next, next one. Um, anything professional that you do, this, I, knew, I know a post like this wouldn't do really well on Instagram, Instagram, but on LinkedIn, anytime you do something professionally, it goes a long way and gives you another stamp of credibility. So pictures like, you, have, you eventually know what belongs where as you're, as you're um, get, grabbing the content. Look at the next slide. Um, and this is what we'll also do on our platform is we'll talk about our next steps without like listening. So a couple of weeks ago, we got a lot of technology integrated into our beekeeping program. So what we'll do, that's one of our, another one of our sub themes. We know that we'll, we already know that we have that content sitting in the bank and we may play with it where we might just post a picture of something to get people's interest. But what, you'll, what we'll do is we're just spacing it out. And then when people see, all right, we launched it, that we have a 21st century apiary, people are like, oh, that's what, these, that's, what, that's what the content was doing. Like I'll actually go through and look at how many people are viewing the content and looking at how to keep them engaged on our page. So everything that we do up there, we, we're very strategic on how we post it. Uh, next, next slide. And anytime I do a presentation, now, I want to drive, drive traffic to our page. I'll put the slide up. 
to so people would then go and then because you, if you have a lot of speaking opportunities, you're in front of a lot of people you normally wouldn't be in in front of. So you want to make sure you drive those people and who are potentially um, supporters or customers in some way to your platform. In a professional setting, more people are going to go to your LinkedIn. But in a more general setting, they're going to go to your Instagram or Facebook. Um, academics like Twitter a lot. I don't like Twitter. It's probably my least favorite. I don't tweet a lot, like random, like it's word based. I don't see a lot of words, uh, but I will tweet something that um, I feel like people can uh, benefit from or people might like. So we had a tweet one year. Well, last year, matter of fact, during like Giving Tuesday, when we tweeted it, and it caught fire and it went viral. It got like a million impressions, 200,000 account thought just from my Twitter page. And like we put like our PayPal link and people just started sending money to it. So like I would just say with 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 social media, just put yourself in a position always to benefit from um from a tweet. Like you never you don't know what's gonna catch people's attention. So just be aware of that and check your um social media if that's what you want to do. If I had to choose one platform that I could just be on just to show people that I I do cool stuff. It would definitely be Facebook or Instagram. Um, so that those are all the tips that I I have um, I have so far. Thanks, Kamal, and thank you uh, to C and to Dominique. Um, does anyone uh, have any questions they want to uh, direct towards our speakers? Um, any anything specific you wanted to ask while while we have them with us? You can um, unmute yourself, or you can drop the question in the chat. This is Lynn Summers from San Bernardino, um, California. The only thing I wanted to, uh, first of all, I loved everybody, um, everybody's um, presentation. So awesome. But make sure whenever, I can't remember, uh, sorry, the gentleman that just was on, he did the drone Make sure that you guys have somebody that has the FCC, um, that has their license, because if somebody is just doing it as recreational and then it gets posted, I don't want whenever they want to get a license to, um, to get it yanked. They are looking really heavily into that. So again, awesome. And uh, thank you. Uh, Kamal, there was a question in the chat for you asking you, um, do you pay someone for your video content? Um, no, I don't think he's ever paid someone for content, but that's only because one of the partners of Sankofa is a bomb photographer and videographer. Oh, that's, well, what, I'm sorry. that's what I meant. Someone to video your content. I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He, 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 now we, we, um, he's a partner of San Kofa. But if, if I didn't have him, I would definitely pay someone. I would vet their work first, though, and to see where it was and to see how people utilize their content before I paid them. But I would pay someone, like if I was a farmer, I would pay somebody probably once a month just to come out and grab content from me once, once a day. I, I just, like, just because he, he was able to show me how to grab content. So, like, the tips I'm talking about, like, don't cut off people's heads in the frame, um, get an upgraded phone, uh, when to use your phone widescreen, or when to use it uh, portrait mode. Those are all tips that he was able to give me as a photographer. So, I've been able to not grab, like, great content, but grab um, better content than the majority of people who would be grabbing content on the farm. So I've just utilized like those little tips and this helped me a lot because a lot of pictures that we posted before, like our heads were cut off in them and I've had to like move from the page. This was like years ago. But um, those are tips that I think would help um, anybody just grab good content. Any other questions? Um, I had a question for you, C. I'm wondering, um, what platform do you use to sell your teas? And is it is it an online platform? Is there a platform that you prefer? Um, so for the teas that we actually sell, I use Wix as my 
um, website platform. And then all of our other tea sales are from wholesale relationships. Um, I'll ask a question. This came from when we were when folks were registering. A lot of people were wondering, um, like for people who are brand new and thinking about like planning what they want to be posting. Um, I'm curious if each of you can share just like a sentence or two about um, like what is the kind of content that you post that gets people the most engaged or interested as people will start to kind of plan what they should be like taking pictures of or what kind of things they should be sharing. Okay, I'll jump in. Um, you know, I, I feel that until you can really fill out what may be deemed valuable by your audience, just, you know, collect as much as you can. You know, if you find something that you find, if, if there's something you might find interesting, if there's a lesson you recently learned, even if it's something simple and mundane, people will follow you on a trip to the, to the hardware store and actually be engaged as to what you bought if you wanna tell them why you're sitting in your car, you know, because they become vested in you. So things that you figure out um, and you're excited about a new pack of seeds, it could be something very, very simple. Those are things that can be deemed share worthy. And definitely, um, again, as your journey progresses, try to document as much of that as possible. And when it comes to taking pictures, I'm not a great photographer, so I just take a lot of them. Out of 40, at least two have to be decent, right? <laughs> and so, you know, use the, the shutter, um, the, the shutter component on your phone where, you know, you can just like hit the button and it takes, I forgot what they call it, snapshot, whatever. It takes like 50 pictures you know, utilize things like that as well. And then also understand, and I'll stop, uh, you can get a longer video piece and then you can break it up. There's no need in you sharing a five minute video if you don't really have a platform that lends itself to that level of content. That five minute video can be stories for the next two days. It can be, um, uh, post longer snippets can be post on your page. There was this movie about this, this girl who gave like this long Twitter story, um, a couple of years, Zora or something. And she went through this whole, um, story on Twitter and people were engaged for days. I've seen humans of New York. If you're not following them on IG, they do a great story. I mean, a great, um, way of bringing, breaking the story down, larger pieces of content to bite-sized morsels. Yeah, uh, um, the, the, the woman's name is Zola, I think Moran or something. Like she, they made like a movie out of her, um, out of her tweet that went, like her Twitter thread that went viral. Um, I, would, I would say based on like our page, I know that like my family, um, the farm looking like it's expanding. Um, like a, a nice picture of me like doing something. Um, like my wife, like there are a couple of things that get like really high engagement. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll just sit on pictures like that. And then I'll wait until like we maybe not, we don't have that many posts coming up and I'll post that picture just to keep people engaged because how to, how the algorithm works on Instagram, it wants you to post videos, but it also likes if you post consistently. So if you don't, if you go like a month without posting, you didn't go through like this long process of trying to get engagement back on your page. So I'll just try to make sure I keep pictures like that in, a, in my bank so I can post later. Uh, what I'll also do, I'll get a tripod um, and it, it, you can get them off for like, Amazon, they're pretty cheap. It has a ring light on it, which I'll use um, like for meetings and stuff. But I'll take this piece off. And what I'll do is if I need to like create a video, I'll just put my phone up to the tripod and then I'll get, grab some content and then I'll post it. So I'll have content in the bank. But that helps me not have to do two jobs of holding my phone while I'm running the BCS or I'm working with bees. That's nearly it's not it's like nearly impossible 
but it allows you to get a different range of content. And I think mine might be a little bit opposite um, for both C and Kamal. Uh, for the the most popular videos and and posts are my longer videos, and I think that. You know, again, going back to C's point, you know, until you kind of figure out who you're speaking to and who you're engaging with, um, you know, post a lot of different things and see what resonates with your with your folks. Um, you know, for us, you know, what resonates is the story of you know what's happening, and so that takes a little while to tell. Um, and people who are um, are already invested. They're they're okay with like sitting and watching, um, you know, a, a four or five minute video. Um, the other thing that is really super popular is just like straight up vegetable shots. Um, you know, really beautiful colors. Um, you know, and that seems to really resonate with people just from, you know, a scrolling standpoint. When you're scrolling by and you see, you know, bam, this bright, you know yellow squash or um you know these you know super interesting looking peppers um that's definitely you know for for us another really popular thing to post thanks um does anyone else have a question either specifically for any one of the presenters or um a general question Uh, so I'll just ask one last uh, one. Oh, go ahead. My name is Benita Clemens, and uh, I thought I had posted it in the chat, but I guess I didn't. I want to know from all three presenters, do you have a visitation or a farm day? Because I would love to actually visit if you have that. All three. Just, just send me um, like a DM or Instagram or email, and then we'll figure out a time we're in the area to come by the farm. Thank you. Yeah, with with COVID, we're we're doing uh, visits by appointment. Um, so you can also reach us on Instagram. Uh, DM is the best way to reach us. And we're in the middle of harvest, and we're a small farm, so we're not doing any visits right now. But we hope to develop a schedule so that we can offer them um, sometime this fall. Thank you all so much. Um, and then I think the last question that was really common when people were registering was just a question of time. Like how much time do you all spend doing this? Um, both like planning your content and then also how do you need to set a lot of time aside week to week to be doing this if it's, um, if it's something new and you're just starting up? Our planning, all of our planning happens um, in the winter. So, you know, all, you know, year round for the crops, um, you know, updates to, you know, major updates to the website, you know, all of that stuff. Um, we have kind of an overarching plan during the winter months. And then, uh, like I said, we do um, a post a video once a week and then post um, pictures to the main page, um, you know, and hopefully once a day. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't, I mean, we're a small farm and, um, you know, we, we have a lot of things going on. And so, you know, social media has its place and its importance. Um, but if I if I'm having to choose between you know getting some more plants in the ground or making this post, um, you know I, I'm going to put the plants in the ground. And I think that was um, and and always needs to kind of be at the top of the of your mind, like you know making sure that social media is working for you and that you're not becoming kind of this. Um, you know, beholding to to making content. So for us, um, I actually create content in batches and I schedule it. So by the time it's on social media, 
Um, usually that's several weeks after it's already happened. And that's also for security reasons, right? I don't want to post when I'm actually at the farm by myself, for example, because um, we have had people that have come visit without um, an invitation. So I do it in batches. I'll, you know, film video for a couple of hours or create images, et cetera. I'll go ahead, schedule all of that into the platforms. I do have help um, now with social media, so they'll schedule all of that and then I'm, I'm done. And so I do that like probably every two weeks, I'll send in some batch content and keep it manageable that way. Um, it just depends on what I'm filming. Um, so like if I'm doing some beekeeping videos with my with Akeem, with my youngest son Akeem, that that it, it it takes some time because he sometimes he just yells random stuff on camera or he'll his attention to get caught by certain things. But other than that, it doesn't take that much time on our end. It's just more so of if I'm doing anything um, new that day or if I'm doing something that people, I mean, anything that I, I, I typically, I pull out my phone and make a little, make a short video. So it, it doesn't take that long. It might take maybe 10 minutes a week if I'm doing plants and stuff. But if I'm, um, if I'm doing bee stuff, that take a little bit longer. Great. Um, thank you all for, um, for coming. Thank you to our three farmers for sharing. Um, Really appreciate it. It's really a lot of rich insights. Um, I'm going to put um, our contact information up uh, on the, the screen again. I, I encourage you to, to follow these farmers. Um, but also, if you have any technical questions, um, uh, please direct them towards me or Sabine. Um, and we're happy to, to triage those and see what, what, see what assistance we can, we can offer or port you in a different direction. Um, but yeah, so this you can contact us here. Um, if you want to learn more about the, the network, Farmers of Color Network, the website is here. And also you can learn more about some of the other uh, opportunities that we provide um, on the website. Um, and we'll be sending out a survey after this um, so we can get your feedback so we can make another one of these, make it stronger. Um, yeah, and do all that. So thank you very much, um, everyone, for joining and um, hope you have a great evening. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh